works. Hi. Hello. Hey. Um, first, I'd like to um, do a few acknowledgements. Um, thanks to uh, Gagron, um, we all kind of maybe moved from places like Twitter and Facebook and went on to the Fediverse. Um, a lot of people obviously helping in terms of uh, protocol and all that, um, but just big shout out to um, people like uh, TipG, who does the Glitch uh, social fork, at least helped a lot with that, and also uh, multiple creatures from um, the monster fork. Before I start, a bit of housekeeping. <coughs> um, there would be blank cards probably, or I have some blank cards that are going around, so I can write down questions. I can bring back the blank cards, um, so if you're shy, or maybe there's many questions, and then I can answer them later on online. Um, also, this talk is political, um, so it's uh, uh, open source and, and free software, so um, be ready for that. Complete warning, uh, Nazi, maybe hot takes, you, you, you'll decide, I guess. Um, and don't know, you know, $250 uh, penalty, right? Obviously, this is my experience, and your experience might be different. Um, but um, as a community host, I have uh, two instances. I've had some many more. Um, one is maybe a single instance, and the other one is about 2,500 people. Uh, the Fedi what? Uh, so what is, um, actually, who is on the Fediverse here? Show of hands. Wow, a lot of people. Well done. So if you didn't raise your hands, now it's time to just Go create an account, that kind of stuff. Um, so the Fediverse is a bunch of servers sharing content with each other, I guess. Uh, there's about five different protocols. Um, maybe most people would be now aware of the activity pub stuff. Uh, there's stuff that's been here for 10 years, like Diaspora stuff. Um, but I think really the Fediverse has really grown with, uh, I guess, Mastodon, uh, which probably most of you are aware of right now. Uh, lots of dots, uh, how it shows, it shows terrible probably. Um, so this is from Fediverse Space, and we see that basically a lot of nodes talking to each other, connected to each other. Um, but the reality is um, everybody is on 10 instances, pretty much, 80%. Um, and this is, I think, a big, big problem as, a, as a, an instance owner and for the Fediverse at large. And many of those are also... Um, commercial instances. So the biggest one is, uh, which will not be named, a very, very big instance, full of robots, whatever, but it's still a commercial instance. Um, some of the Japanese Fediverse are also like hosted by cor um, corporate companies. But let's talk about licenses. A little bit. So do you know this guy? It's called Mark. Uh, you heard of the Fediverse, I heard. Um, so he says, uh, it says, most interesting question technology right now is about centralization versus decentralization. That is a New Year uh, resolution stuff, right? Let's talk a little bit about licenses. I don't know if you know this guy. His name is Jack. Um, he's funding a small independent team of uh, people to do um, decentralized stuff, I guess. Um, really, let's talk about licenses for a bit. I don't know if you remember this, 2015. No, it's not the end of XMPP for Google Talk, right? <coughs> I'm sure you all know what's going on now. Um, as an instance owner, I'm kind of ready for that. I'm kind of ready for those people to come in, use the software we make for free, use the protocol we made well aware, well available, well tested. Um, Personally, I have no, no wish to have Twitter.com really federating with me. Uh, but currently, they can all use all the, all the things we've provided to them. Like, we make plenty of tools, and they can just use them, right? So that's going to be asking about you know, whenever this happens. Like, we're all going to be complaining about Twitter and Google and you know, Apple and whatnot that are going to come in, use the software we made, use the community we made, and just going to storm in, right? Let's talk about moderation a little bit. So the Fediverse, when you explain it, is a bit like emails, right? Everybody has emails, and then they can send emails to each other's servers, and then what we end up with, emails is spam, or spam. So on the Fediverse, we have this guy. 
I don't know if you know about him, but uh, he's just this um, guy going around creating a new account and saying, like, um, America, you shouldn't marry an American woman, basically. And he's, like, all, there all the time, and he keeps popping in. And he's not a robot. It's a human just going in, creating an account, and spamming everybody by hand. <laughs> Terrible. Let's talk about uh, moderation. So on this thing, it's maybe not very visible, but the top, there's a shadow of a guy. says, I feel no man. But that thing, and then there's a button to put report fasci, go suspend, mark that resolve. That's from the Mastodon interface. And uh, it scares him, right? Um, so as instance, I mean, this happened all the time, this discourse about moderating and blocking people. And uh, that, that's made by uh, Perfinus Perfinus, by the way. Thank, thank, you, uh, thank you for that. Thanks. Um, and it's, it's all the time, like, people say, oh, you shouldn't block anybody, you shouldn't use moderation. But the fact is, uh, I don't fash this on my... Master, right? Let's talk about moderation for a little bit. So here's a story in a, in a, a tale in um, two pictures. So um, Eugene Gargron very famously say, you know, like, come to Mastodon, there's no Nazis, right? Come. Le leave Twitter, there's plenty of Nazis there, they don't do nothing about it. And it's fine, it's kind of why I joined, right? But, oh, they arrived anyway. They came in. And... Um, and here, basically, what, what this is saying is that there is a problem between uh, openness on one side and um, safety on the other. So there's this paradox of tolerance, where if you tolerate everybody, then you're going to have people that don't tolerate everybody else. Um, and, and that's kind of like that's kind of what's happening here, right? Like people say, "Oh, you should allow everybody," and then they're not happy. Well, let's talk about moderation a little bit more. So um, here you can see an uh, admin instance uh, separating the OAT from the Nazis. Um, a very manual, pro very manual pro uh, process. You, you just have to do everything by hand, pretty much. Um, currently, we, moder we only federate content. The moderation part is not part of the, the federation. Um, so and this is something we could do and probably should do, is have a way to follow the people. So, you know, I have um, my good friend say, Elliot here, and I say, oh, Elliot, I really like your funk, uh, funk rail instance. I trust you to do the right thing. And I would like to say, whenever Elliot says, those instances are bad, I would like to copy this thing. But I cannot do that. I have to rely on, like, hashtags and, and message and, like, telling everybody, oh, this is happening, please. Uh, you know, there's this new fascist instance. Block them. I don't know. I mean, obviously, we have some uh, robots, but that's as good as it gets, right? Like, hey, there's a new instance popping up. It's, um, it's those bad people that um, have terrible uh, view. That's not the problem. It's, it's, it's privacy. So here's a good example of somebody doing it maybe right. But uh, I think what people don't really realize on the Fediverse, or at least for Mastodon, as far as Mastodon is concerned, like, um, Privacy is not necessarily the primary focus, right? People don't necessarily um, know about it, but you have to go and tick boxes and make sure you put yourself out of um, uh, Google and search engine and stuff like that. So this is a good, good example. Um, if you have a robot.txt, we'll follow that. We'll not index your content. Um, obviously, it would be good if you go to search or social, look up your username and whatnot, and you see actually what you configure or what you didn't configure. And um, that's, that, that's a good one, but... Um, Let's talk about privacy for a little bit. Does anybody know what this is? Curly flower, yes, correct. So um, there was um, a people from the University of Milan that did a study, a uh, pretty bad paper, and um, they looked at, they scraped all the data, and they looked what was on their uh, content warning. And you know, their, their, um, their vision of it was like, this is bad things, right? Like, on the content warning is bad thing. It's not the spoiler alert or anything like that. So when they scrapped everything, cauliflower was one of the things people were talking about, apparently, on the content warning, right? <laughs> uh, which is hilarious. But, um, so people are scraping the Fediverse, and, and they just think it's OK. I mean, here's basically what they said, that their, their, um, their, um, their idea about why they could do this. Basically, it doesn't say, don't scrap it in the terminal service of many Mastodon instance. So they just thought, oh, OK, we'll just scrap it then. It's terrible, right? <coughs> Consent, oh, who knows about that, right? Um, so this is happening now. It's been happening many times before. There's been instance trying to archive the Fediverse, and every time we have to block people, and it's a drama, and it's 
It's annoying. So let's talk about privacy for a bit. Please, if you make some software, they go on the Fediverse, please, I beg you, please. Just try to make sure that by default, things are private. I know we all want to expand the network. We want to have like lots of content going everywhere, but um, by default, people coming in, they, they don't know where they're signing up for most of the time. It's quite complex. Most of the interface is not very straightforward. It's really hard. Um, so if you want more people to be not disappointed that suddenly they say something and then it's indexed by everybody, and ju just if you do software, please think about being not indexable and kind of hiding it from the search engine in this world. Um, so I probably went very fast, but as a summary here, um, there's a few things that really, um, on the Fediverse at the moment, it's kind of like difficult for me to deal with as a, an instance admin. So there's big instances, and that's where most of the network is, and that's a big threat because it means as soon as, let's say, Amazon social goes down, then it's like it's hundreds of thousands of people that cannot access the Fediverse anymore. And the goal of decentralization, right, is not to have everybody on the same instance. And that, that's a big threat. Um, as I said, corporate interest is there. I think they'll be next to come to the Fediverse. They'll be very, very, very happy to use what we built and build on top of that. And if we remember um, what happened with XMPP, the embrace, extend, extinguish, I think this, this is what's going to happen next if we're not careful. So we're going to have to think about that. Um, and the current licenses basically means that everybody can just fork it and make uh, a bad fork. Um, there are licenses like, uh, I don't know, the NPL, and the hypocrite uh, license that says, you know, maybe it should be open source but not to everybody, right? Like you don't necessarily want to have Nazi forking your code and then making uh, Nazi mastodons, you know. That, that's another threat. And, and we've seen that many times with like the fork of Tusky and all that. Um, by the way, if Tusky people are looking, thank you for your software. Tusky is great. Um, moderation is really hard. Uh, it takes a lot of time, lots and lots of time, and it's very manual at the moment. Um, so it would be great if we had better tools. And um, if you are making tools and if you are a, a community host, I implore you to think about the paradox of tolerance because it's, it's a thing, right? We cannot be nice with everybody because that will be including people that are really not nice and there to make problems, make a fuss, um, make people feel unsafe, make people feel uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I'm not going to name them, but there's quite a few communities now in the Fediverse that really... Um, what they drive for is just creating drama, creating problems. Uh, therefore, I'm not going to name them. And that's about it. So I get plenty of time for questions. So anyone does have a question? I'll bring the cards back as well. You could. Yeah, just pass on the cards forward so we can read them out if there are some questions. Do you want more? Okay, oh. so. Um, yeah, I wonder if you have any strategies in place to try to encourage uh, more different servers to try to make them more decentralized and try to push new users to uh, different instances. So. So what's your question again? Um, so about uh, trying to encourage more decentralization of the Fediverse, essentially. Um, personally, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say it now. I'm not going to make friends here. But um, I'm usually blocking the big instances, uh, as in I'm silencing them. Um, I would implore people like, you know, Gargron to just stop getting people in, uh, actually trying to actively push them out to make their own. Um, but I mean, everybody can, I cannot do much about, about that personally. I mean, I'd like to say, you know, if you're on Mastodon.social, uh, I'd implore you, just move, find a new instance. There's plenty out there. Um, if you don't know where to go, just ask a question, um, and people will tell you what instance is good based on your, your, your interest, I guess. Uh, so this was a, was a good uh, roundup of of issues around federation and centralization, but uh, the question is what can be done about that? For example, uh, 
the question is, why do people uh, gather towards uh, the large players? Do they do that just, uh, for example, uh, w wouldn't they do that if we, for example, had like uh, decentralized identities or uh, mon n n uh, nomadic uh, identities like some, uh, some implementations have, have? And have you, for example, looked at uh, how the... Uh, how the centralization problem uh, differs per uh, software, per implementation. So, for example, whether Hubzilla has the same problem? Um, that's a very good question. So, I think like uh, Zot, for example, is trying to cover that, that problem, I guess. Um, I think in, um, in, social, in um, <coughs> social network, there are two types of social network. People that use their first name, last name, that's their identity online, they want to be them and people that just um, have just an account, doesn't have to be them, it's not necessarily linked with their personality. Uh, like on Twitter, for example, you would have more people that are not necessarily themselves, or look like themselves. And on Facebook, you'd have people that are like, their first name, their last name, and a picture of their face. Um, so, for the Facebook type users, I guess, for the people that want to have an identity, I think Zot and Ipzilla maybe cater for that group. Personally, I'm not necessarily interested in that kind of thing, I'd rather have many outs and many different versions of myself. And I can say, well, here's the, I don't know, board game place, and here's like me talking about software, and here's like me about doing shit posts. And I think, for me, it works better like that. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are trying to solve the nomadic identity. I think it's quite complex. The answer is like, when people come to the Fediverse, all the options here are very complex. People don't, are very used to like, I want something and it's there. They, will, they don't want to think about it too much. And that's the biggest problem. People come to something and they just expect it works. They don't expect to be thinking about it a lot of the time. So, so a lot of what you... I, I'm, I'm very old. Um, I'm, I'm from Usenet. Um, and many of the things that you describe and that I'm seeing in the new, like, Fediverse is repeating some of the mistakes that Usenet made. Um, in particular the aversion to being good about moderation and the lack of good tools for managing bad behavior. Um, and I don't know if you know anybody who's, who's from Usenet, and <laughs> uh, maybe you want to talk to those people about the mistakes that were made, uh, assuming that you could find hmm. some of those people who, who agree that they were mistakes. Um. I'm going to say that I don't think the tools we have are bad. I'm thinking that there, we have tools now, which in a lot of places they weren't there before. So we just need now better tools. I think we made a good use of the tools we have now, and they're probably better than what maybe there was before. Uh, good. <laughs> but we, we, we need to make the next level of the tools, right? Like just a bit more powerful. But yes, if I can find a, if people want to at me and tell me about the mistake they made, maybe I can talk to you. Maybe you know the mistake. I uh, have many. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could be a bit more specific about the um, uh, moderation tools and better moderation tools. Um, for example, uh, when I have to do moderation uh, on Mastodon, uh, what's the most time consuming is to investigate the report mm -hmm. according to the standards and guidelines of our instance, which can be different of another person, uh, another instance. Um, so I was wondering. Um, basically, for us, um, yeah, the most time-consuming part is investigating a report. Um, so I was wondering if you could go a bit more in-depth uh, about what was your idea with um, uh, moderation tools uh, needing to be better. Yeah, I think um, at the moment there's no level of uh, trust between instances, right? So there's my instance, uh, there's other instances, I either follow them or uh, I don't block them basically or I don't silence them. So that's very binary here. I think if there was more level of trust, then we could say it'd be easier to kind of um, look at the report and say what happened. So for example, if I could say, um, I don't know, um, Matthew's instance is very good and it's very well maintained and therefore when there's reports and there's the same reports on her instance, I could say, well, like obviously that user is a bad person, they're just a spammer and then I could just take care of it automatically if I could. So if I could just have more info about other m moderators and other administrators, I could then potentially get rid of the really uh, spammy problem. After that, once the spam is, more, is put away, then we have like maybe the more code of conduct type problem, where it's like, you know, is this person a fascist? Are they, um, I don't know, 
Are they transphobic? Are they you know, being abusive? And then it reduces a bit the noise. Uh, I agree, then you just need more people. I mean, at the moment, the, the way the math and that stuff is very hierarchy based, right? There's admin at the top, moderation, and then end users. Maybe there's something there that can be done to kind of distribute the power as well. To spend less time as a moderator doing a lot of that. But yeah, I agree with you, it's just a lot of fun, right? Um, I think moderation can be quite easy if you keep your instance small. Yes. Um, I really like Darius Kazemi's idea of keeping it 50 people or less, because then you can know everyone who's on your instance, and so if you have a problem, you can actually talk to them, and they can talk to each other. And I think it, those small instances are better neighbors as well, because they have less people who are just there to troll, because you'd be trolling your friends on your own instance. like, you know. And I think it also helps with the idea of uh, everyone wanting to join the big instances. The problem is that people don't no small instances. So if all of us who know how to run a server created small instances for our friends, it, you know, it's easier for people to find an instance to join if everyone just, hey, I'm just also going to do a server. And th then the workload is small because you're not trying to grow something enormous. I, I think the, um, exactly what you said, 100%, yes. And if, if there was a software that was easy to run, there would be more people running it. And at the moment, you have to be a system administrator, right? Regardless uh, which software you look at from... Um, uh, project to kind of tool, um, all of those are, they require some knowledge of running servers. Like you need to know a web server, you know what Redis is, what a, a database is, and you need to make them work, and it's a lot of work. And obviously, if there was uh, alternative, I know I'm sure people have some names in mind now, but alternative where you don't need to like SSH to the servers and then add some type of configuration file and then restart it to do a block, then that would help. So I feel like having servers that can be run easily, so you can have that, that one geek that has this 100 people that he knows, and he'd be the geek for those 100 people, and then we can have small instances, they'd be easier to manage, then, as you said, better neighbors, and then we can start to know each other a bit more, and then you can have plenty of small instances. Yeah, I agree with you, perfect point. Any further questions? Um, about uh, centralization, do you consider, uh, I mean, I, I definitely agree there should be, it should be easy to host services and I th or, you know, instances, and I think that's the biggest kind of barrier for a lot of people. Do you think, do you consider that a problem when there are only a few services, off, there are multiple instances running, but it's one hosting service or something? Um, yes and no. I mean, I, um, I use uh, services from, uh, Kick 2000, and I use uh, master host. I use different instances, so I don't even do that myself because I'm also a system admin. I don't do that every day. I don't want to go home and do the same thing. Um, so I use third-party services. I think they're fine. Um, there's not that many of it because also it's hard. It's hard to be a, a, a host provider. It takes time, it takes knowledge, and not many people want to do it. I mean, like master host doesn't necessarily want to do glitch stock for because it's, it's not like the mainstream and it comes with a lot of headaches. I mean, not necessarily, I don't know. They just don't want to do it, basically. I don't think there's a lot of headache with it, sorry. If anybody from Keystruck is there, it's great. I love your software. Thank you very much. Um, but yes, it's not necessarily a problem if many people host. Like, if there was at least five or six, that'd be great. But there's going to be one or two or maybe three. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? We would have time for one additional question. If not, then thank you very much for your talk. <laughs>